Hello, Metablocks neighbors. I'm Yu Kai Chow, a co-founder of Metablocks and also a pioneer in the field of gamification. Today in this video, I want to talk about what are the benefits of reserving our Blocks NFT early, which is here during the February and March. Some of you know that we just launched a reservation period about a week ago. San Francisco, I think, uh, has been booked quite a bit. 25% of our uh, San Francisco blocks are all booked up. Tier fives are all sold out. And uh, tier fours, there's uh, as of now, 38 of them left. And I wanted to make this video because I was talking to someone I work with in my gamification company. And he was telling me he reserved the blocks. He didn't do more because he wasn't sure what kind of commitment it is. And he was just trying to see if he could do it uh, later when the minting starts. And I talked to him a bit, I explained to him a bit of the concepts. And then after he's like, whoa, actually, <laughs> this is really, really good. I should probably reserve more. So I figured that I should probably create a video that uh, clarifies uh, some of the mechanics more and just kind of explain some of the benefits you might get if you reserve early. Of course, this is something we're working very hard on, but it's completely up to you. If you want to reserve or mint later, we believe this is going to be number one, very, very impactful to the future and it's very meaningful. And also uh, we have, we believe it has a really high chance to have that long lasting value and become quite successful. This is San Francisco. This is our first city that we're launching. If you're not aware, Metablocks is an NFT powered by real world places and real life memories. And so you can uh, basically get, get these properties, these blocks in San Francisco as of now, and you can infuse what we call root memories into these blocks and make it more valuable. And those memories go on the blockchain and lives on forever. And we can see that there's five different tiers of our properties, tier one being the most abundant and tier five uh, being the most scarce. And for those who don't know, the, you know, the green are available blocks, uh, red are reserved blocks, and then um, purple are landmarks. So landmarks are gonna be a big thing in the metal blocks experience. Um, one of the things that is very important to know is that you cannot reserve or buy a blocks right now. You can only get it by auctioning with MetaRed, which is the in-game currency that uh, generates when you own a blocks. And generation increases when you have a higher level blocks and you have a higher tier blocks. Now, something a lot of people don't know is that tiers of a blocks, right, is a tier four, tier five, tier three. It's based on how close they are to the landmarks. Each landmark has a prestige score that's assigned to them. And based on the distance each blocks is to uh, that one landmark and its prestige score and other close by landmarks, that will determine its tier. So you can realize that over here, there's actually uh, uh, four landmarks within a landmark. This is the Golden Gate Park. Uh, or, and, it, and within the Golden Gate Park, there's the California Academy of Sciences. There's the... Uh, there's the Japanese tea garden and also the De Young Museum, as well as the botanical garden, right? So there's, so there's a pretty good cluster of high value landmarks here. So, which is why you see over here, a lot of them would be tier four, tier five, uh, alongside a lot of tier fives. But once you take a step away, it becomes tier four, you take a step away, it's tier three. Uh, over here, there's more tier fours than tier fives because they're further away from these three, right? So, so that's how you kind of think about them. So if you're close to purple um, uh, purple areas on the map, then you would be a high tier block. So again, a lot of people don't realize that. So just explaining how that part works. Now, when it comes to these tiers, when you reserve them, basically what that means is that you will, let's say uh, this one, because this one is like out in the open, right? Tier three. So if you reserve this, this basically means that when we mint, which is early April, the email you reserve it with, like if you click reserve, you'll just enter your email and then put in whatever email, right? So the email you reserve will be sent a link and no one else can mint this blocks besides you through that link. But after 48 hours, if you do not mint that reservation, then it goes back into the public pool and anyone can reserve it. Now it's gonna be more expensive the moment it goes back to the public pool, uh, which we'll explain why very soon. When you mint it, you know, this was also a question, people, we can actually mint in a variety of ways. We can mint, mint it with uh, Polymatic, which is uh, Matic, uh, which has the one of the lowest um, gas fees 
can do it for Ethereum. If you'd like to trade with Ethereum, usually the gas fee is a little higher. And then you could do USDT. So that's basically the equivalent of US dollars. And we're also implementing a feature where you can just do a debit card. So you can reserve that. And then it'll tell you how many uh, mana rent it generates per day and the storage. So a few things uh, that's important to recognize. If we go to the MetaBlocks battle plan, you will see that we have the phase schedules. So if no one has any blocks in San Francisco, then tier ones will be $100 to mint. Tier five will be $500 to mint. Uh, we're definitely not looking for those you know, $100,000 kind of mint prices or whatnot. Uh, the highest tier you have is $500. However, uh, it does go scale up. So as more percentage of the city uh, gets owned, uh, each mint price for a blocks increases by 50%. So let's say 50% of San Francisco is now owned, or, or let's just sort of take what the data is right now. Let's say 25% of San Francisco is, is reserved, and let's say all of them decide to, to mint. So now we have phase three, right? 20%. So now at this point, if you want to mint a tier one, it's going to be $225. And if you want to mint a tier five, it's going to be uh, $1,125. So this is a mechanism we created to number one, control the, uh, the scarcity pool in a sense, because, hey, if the demand is at that level of 30% owned, then yeah, then we make sure the current blocks owners, they're able to sell it, their property to other owners, as opposed to suddenly it's like, hey, I can just buy a cheaper one uh, that's unminted at a random place. Now we do believe that, let's say if the mint price is, uh, let's say phase six, $759, and let's say you bought it 100, we do believe that because the, the blocks you picked is probably more sought after, right? More meaningful somehow. It's at a better location. It is a famous person's home, whatever it is. And you've also leveled it up. It should be at least as valuable as unminted blocks, right? It should be way more valuable. But And if unminted blocks is $759, you should be able to sell at $759. Or if you sell it below it, it should be a lot easier to sell, right? Even though there's 50%. Uh, unminted blocks in the neighborhood, in the whole city, you don't have to compete with those because those are just way more expensive. Whereas you can just sell yours for 600 and get a 6x return if you so want to. This is why one of the big benefits of reserving uh, a blocks is that it will guarantee you a phase one price. E even if we say 40 hours, right? Even if 30 hours later, a lot of people have been minting it and now it's actually to phase four. As long as you mint with that uh, reservation link during those four, four, first 48 hours before that expires, you will always have phase one. So it is possible that if a bunch of people reserve just during the reservation phase, the, the, the first day of minting, 100% of San Francisco is minted. That's definitely possible. And everyone minted at uh, phase one prices. So, and, and that's fine. Now, it could also be possible where you know just 80% is minted. So 80% of people have blocks and they all bought it at a phase one price. And then at that point, the rest of the 20% will be sold at much, much higher prices. So now the 80% can literally just price their blocks higher and still be a much better deal than the unminted ones. That's the mechanism we have. So that's the one benefit uh, we have for reservation, uh, earlier reservation. There's no real commitment. We do limit uh, each email to be up to only three uh, blocks because we don't want like one person to have like half of San Francisco, right? Especially reserved up. Uh, that's not good for the ecosystem, but what we do do is there's a limit of three uh, per email. And, you know, if you want, uh, when you reserve it, there's no commitment. It just says, hey, I like this place. And then you can do it. Um, some people have asked me what would be a good strategy besides the tiers. And I'd say, you know, being next to high, uh, high tier locations is good. Being close to clusters are good because we, we later on have this uh, neighborhood bonus, which is if there's more people who own blocks in your area, in your region, then everyone in this area will get a bonus a meta rent uh, generation per uh, every day. So that's something that's important. The other thing is zooming in and actually looking at what's around. So maybe if you find a spot that's like, hey, there's a church here, you <laughs> the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, most likely, um, you can reserve that because number one, there's probably lots of people who have memories at that church. And number two, people who attend the church might also be interested in acquiring that blocks from you. So uh, Equinox, a gym. So yeah, just, just zooming in and finding like places of interest 
uh, probably will help uh, increase the value. Now, sometimes there's no quote unquote place of interest, but there's people who live there and they might be interested in uh, getting that blocks from you too. So, so there are a variety of ways to think about. It. Now, another mechanism we are introducing soon, which as another benefit for being in the reservation phase is that we are going to do a design where the moment you reserve it, it starts to collect meta rent. So even before you even before you own the blocks, even before you spend a single uh, dollar or, or ETH or, or, or Matic, you will start collecting meta rent. So you literally can just reserve a blocks and connect your wallet and it'll start generating meta rent, which is again, our in-game currency. It's not an ERC-20 token. That's the meta blocks coin that'll come later uh, when we start to get landmarks and we start leveling up a blocks. So that's another video probably. Uh, but here, at least we know that you can, you can start generating meta rent just by reserving, just by saying, hey, I'm interested. And then at the end of the day, if you don't want to actually purchase, you can just say, yeah, I don't want to purchase. I'm, I didn't spend a single dollar and I got some meta rent as if I owned uh, the blocks throughout this period. So I think there is uh, just a lot of benefits to being part of the reservation list in meta blocks. So I highly encourage you to do that again. As you can see, there's you know, the, the top places are all, all taken, right? But there's still a lot of plenty of interesting places that probably will be have great memories, will be places of great interest to other people uh, that I think you should think about reserving because you get these kind of benefits. And uh, But if not, that's fine too. If you just want to observe that you can also just check out uh, how the minting goes, whatnot. And if you miss the best moments to get uh, your blocks in San Francisco, maybe later in the year, I think we'll start uh, opening up our, our second or third city, uh, most likely based on our community voting, et cetera. Uh, maybe you can, since you, you, you observe this, this phase, right? You've looked at it, maybe at that point, you would be uh, ready to jump in and, and, and take advantage of that early opportunity. Yeah, so I think just wanted to clarify that. Again, very, very excited and passionate about this project. I'm learning a lot and the goal is to create that long lasting value and apply some of my uh, gamification like Talos's design to the process. I'm really grateful to have a team to have built this and I'm you know more than excited to see a lot of these memories get rooted into the blockchain and be commemorated forever. Uh, with that said, I will see you guys in MetaBlocks and in the Discord. All right, this is Yukai Chao signing off.